the Lord, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit brought to my notice a subject uh, which I am going to share with you. We maybe read a verse from uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for so, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. The Holy Spirit brought this very forcibly to my notice at that time. So I started looking from Genesis onwards how this aspect, the brotherly love, is being developed in the word of God. Started with uh, Genesis, went on to uh, Exodus, then Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and uh, Judges. Oh, by the time I was discharged. But coming home again for another two weeks, I have, I have to be in isolation. So the Lord enabled me to continue that study. But then I made it a point not to refer to anything, only the same style of uh, studying uh, from the word of God alone. Uh, today I am going to share with you the first lesson I learned there from the book of Genesis. You know the uh, application of the spiritual principle of brotherly love as shown uh, in the Bible is essentially different from what the world knows about. In the world there are, you know, when people want to show love, they just announce, oh, I am going to give so much of for charity or something like that. So the world showing charity is more like the story in Luke chapter 21. The rich putting their gifts into the treasury. The Lord looked and said, these rich people out of their abundance have put their offering, but the poor woman out of her poverty put in all that she had. According to the word of God, brotherly manifestation of brotherly love should be something like that. Like the widow of Sarafat, first make for the prophet. See, the world's charity is so often for a cause. And the giver gives and takes the credit for that. But the biblical teaching about the uh, the manifestation of brotherly love first asks unto the Lord. Then the giver will have to give himself or herself. Secondly, it is not for a cause. The giver will have to totally identify himself with the giver. Uh, 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 with the one who receives. That's why uh, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 3 says, as though uh, you are bound with them who are in the, ch in, the, in the prison. Now, we shall go to the bo book of Genesis to see how this theme is developed there uh, by and large. There is an interesting study to put uh, together the exercise of, of faith in the lives of three principal women in Genesis. I mean Eve, Sarah and Rebecca. Eve had exercises and lessons to learn in connection with Cain and Abel. Sarah in connection with Ishmael and uh, Isaac. Rebecca in connection with Esau and Jacob. To a certain extent the lessons are similar. There is a different element in each uh, lesson. You know, when we turn to John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse uh, 12 and 13, we are told that those who are born into the family of God, who are born not of blood, number two, not of the will of the flesh, number three, not of the will of man, but of God. Uh, in the lives of these three women in Genesis, we can see a very clear manifestation of these three uh, lessons. Uh, in the case of uh, um, uh, Eve, you know, when she 
had her first child, uh, 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 Cain, she thought she has got Christ. The promised seed has come. But she had to learn that the promised seed cannot come from sinful, uh, uh, from sinful parents. Uh, from Eve, who was a sinner, only a sinful man can come. Sinful parents can only beget sinful children. Uh, this is the lesson Eve had to learn. No, not of blood. The line of natural generation in that there is nothing for God. Not of blood. Eve learned her lesson before Abel was born. Therefore, she called his name Abel, that is means vanity. Now, Sarah, she has to learn this lesson, it is not of the flesh. Sarah thought that if God is late in fulfilling his promise, she would work on improving on the natural. I will get the promised son through Hagar. The result is Ishmael, the will of the flesh. Man trying to correct himself and put things right. And what is God's commandment? All that is of the flesh must be cast out. Divine promise cannot be secured through the ways of the flesh, but only through the principle of faith. Isaac must be crowned and Ishmael to be cast out. This is the lesson Sarah had to learn. Now, what about Rebecca? Not of the will of man, but of God. This is the lesson of divine sovereignty. See, the will of man has no place whatsoever in the ways of God. As for God, his way is perfect. The will of man would prefer Esau to Jacob. It has been uh, often mentioned by various people that Esau was the better and nobler of the two brothers. Rebecca had to learn the lesson that God is sovereign and this alone would guide her affection. God revealed that I am going to have my way. Nothing excludes man like divine sovereignty. The will of man is completely shut out. Isaac valued uh, Esau's venison and this guided his affection. But the lesson we have to learn here is we have to look at our brethren from God's point of view as to how God looks at them. We, have, we shall look at God's uh, revelation of his divine principles concerning brotherly love from the lives of now three men in the book of Genesis. First of all is Abraham. The divine principle to learn is that we have to look at our brethren from God's point of view even as God sees them. With Abraham you. showing brotherly love to his nephew Lot. First of all, in relation to the Canaanites who were around them, Abraham says, we are brethren. He did not say, we are uncle and nephew, we are brethren. So, we must behave like God's children. When Lot was taken captive, some people came and told Abraham's nephew was taken captive. But when Abraham heard this, what does he say? His brother Lot was taken captive. Abraham completely identified himself with his brother. Then he goes to rescue him. See, here what we see, Abraham doesn't get overoccupied with the blemishes and failures of Lot. Then, but he looks at the qualities that God could see in Lot. In the New Testament, Holy Spirit describes the righteous Lord. Abraham could look at Lord from that point of view. Oh, here is a righteous man suffering. Uh, this is the lesson we learn about brotherly love from Abraham. Abraham. Looking at Lord as God himself looks at him. Do Abraham. not get over occupied with the blemishes and failures of a brother. The second person 
we have to uh, see is uh, Jacob. And again, the divine principle here is the uh, divine sovereignty. And the place of divine sovereignty in our brotherly relationship. Now, God in his sovereign will had, had chosen Jacob instead of Esau. And God in his sovereignty had taken, uh, uh, chosen uh, Joseph instead of Reuben for the divine blessings of the birthright. In the case of Jacob, he could not wait for God's time, but schemed and plotted to snatch the birthright. Therefore, Jacob has to be disciplined by God. Uh, so, Jacob had to be disciplined by God to prepare him to be a partaker of divine uh, uh, na nature. And when God fulfills that, eventually, uh, he changed him from Jacob to Israel. But you know, from that moment onwards, Israel limped on his hips for the rest of his life. It is not uh, something which happened or, uh, after a few days I will get healed. God's discipline for Jacob to become Israel is that he should limp on his hips for the rest of his life. After many years, even when he was blessing Pharaoh in uh, Egypt, he was limping on his hips. Many of us, spiritually speaking, may be limping on our hips. Price we pay for changing, being changed from Jacob to Israel. You know, Jacob was a man who was always very fond of running. Always running away from situation. Running away from Esau. Running away from uh, Laban. But, you know, God so, his God's sovereign will so decide that this man who is running now, when he becomes Israel, he should be limping for the rest of his life. Now, as Israel, he can no longer run away from situation. Very often, God takes us through this experience and makes us limp through the rest of our life for this divine purpose to be fulfilled in our lives. You know, the third person is Joseph. You know, the divine principle revealed from the life of Joseph is that he was not ashamed to call them his brethren. The perfect fulfillment of that we see in uh, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. Uh, our, concerning our Lord Jesus Christ, we are told that he was not ashamed to call us his brethren. Uh, we can see the foreshadow of that in the life of Jacob, uh, Joseph. For Joseph... God's will was revealed to him through the dream that he will be the ruler and his brothers would uh, uh, be subject to him. But he never moved a finger to appropriate that but waited for God to exalt him. Psalm 105 verse 18 we read, the word of the Lord tested or tried Joseph. And Joseph went through 13 years of testing. Here we see the one who is to rule has been tested and tried. It is like the experience of David. David will have to first fight with a lion and a bear before meeting Goliath. This is what we see in Psalm 1. We have the experience uh, of a man who prospered in lowly circumstances. But when we come to Psalm 2, we are, we have the picture of this man being exalted. Psalm 1 gives his moral suitability and Psalm 2 gives his exaltation as God's king. Now this calls for a wonderful wisdom from God. And God gave this wonderful wisdom to Joseph, especially in dealing with his erring brethren. Joseph had wisdom to administer the good for the world at last. But Joseph had divine wisdom to produce the right exercise in the souls of his brethren. The brothers had to be brought face to face with their sin and guilt. Joseph cannot 
give the knowledge of himself or reveal himself to a heart which is not morally right. When the work <coughs> of faith was completed, we have the revelation, I am Joseph. The intimate fellowship we have now with the God the Father and God the Son is a result of this revelation. You know, it is beautiful to see men like Jacob and David coming out at the end better than they ever did. And God is looking for that. Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Jacob blessed his sons. He blessed Joseph's sons. Then he worshipped leaning on the staff. What a wonderful commentary of the Holy Spirit concerning the end, glorious end of Jacob. You know, God's discipline does not reach its full fruition with any of us until the end. There is always some dross to be consumed. That's why uh, Apostle Peter just to us and he says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are concerning us believers, we are told in the word of God, bearing, we are those who bear fruit in our old age. You know, only a believer can bear fruit in the old age. Anything else in the world, trees or men, uh, human beings, they cannot bear fruit in their old age. But this wonderful privilege is given to believers, bearing fruit in their old age. Uh, you know, concerning Joseph and his brethren, even after all this wonderful revelation, I am Joseph, after jo Jacob's death, we see the sad exhibition of unbelief with Joseph's brothers. They lived for 17 years on Joseph's bounty. Joseph gave them the very best of everything. Yet, they did not know and appreciate, appreciate Joseph's heart. They thought that now our father is dead, he shall treat us badly. When they went to Joseph and told this, Joseph wept when they spoke to him like this. From Genesis chapter 44 onwards, if you notice carefully, uh, the sons of Jacob are known as Joseph's brothers. And till chapter 44, they are all known as the sons of Jacob. Now, after Joseph, you know, gave this wonderful revelation, I am Joseph, we don't see them refer being referred to as sons of Jacob. Uh, till uh, then all the references, they are Joseph's brothers. Now, the message here is, let brotherly love continue. You know, um, in Genesis we see the first question God asked was, Adam, where are you? Now, the next question God asks is to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? Where is your brother Abel? Now, God, the Holy Spirit, ask each one of us every day, where is your brother Abel? Okay. You know, in uh, First uh, uh, Corinthians in chapter 8, there is a verse which says, because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. We have to look at our brethren from that angle. He is the one for whom Christ died. We have no right to destroy such a big brother because of our knowledge. Let brotherly love continue.